This is the show that has hosted everyone from Sugar Ray Leonard to Keith One Time Thurman. This is Tough Talk Tonight, brought to you by Heavy Bag Boxing. Welcome to another episode of Tough Talk Tuesday. As always, I'm your host, Lucas Biggers. Alongside me will be Sakura and Rob. How's it going, guys? Hey, Ray, it's, it's, it's a cool day in the neighborhood. I wish. <laughs> it's hot as hell down here, man. <laughs> uh, well, guys, let's jump right into it. Uh, Devin Haney wins um, pretty easily, I would say, but it's a great fight. Um, and then he calls out Lomachenko. What do you guys think about that? So... Y'all better, better wake up, man. It's a tough talk. Come on. <laughs> my my impression of Devin Haney, period, is I think he's a legit prospect. I really do. Um, I don't think he's outside of the prospect factor yet because of the lack of competition, because we haven't seen him against any notable fighters. So I really think he's a good prospect. He's a tough kid. That being said. If Momichenko is as good as we everybody says he is, Devin Haney's not ready for him yet. He needs some notable, more notable names on his resume before he be he's able to fight a Momichenko. I'm not saying that he can't beat him right now, um, but he needs some more moti- notable uh, people on his resume before he should even be considered in that type of fight because of the risk factor, because I think he can be. I have to agree with um, Rob. I can't believe I'm saying this. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm going to have to agree with him. I do think it's too early for him to be calling out people. Um, I think his camp is not doing him any favors, giving him fights against, um, you know, people that don't have the best of records. And, um, I mean, I see he already has a fight schedule for November to be announced for um, the, let's see, uh, interim WBC world lightweight title. I guess it's going to be like a um, for him to uh, like a title em- eliminator. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he's he's fighting on that uh, KSI versus Logan Paul two card. Oh man, oh, we'll, we'll, get, we'll let you have your time too. with that in just a minute. Huh? <laughs> Logan who? Logan what? Hello, good who? I would I would say that the the clown one and clown versus clown two uh boxing card. That's just exactly what it is. We we not there yet, y'all. We talking about yeah. Devin. But, no, but, uh, it'll have his time. To give man. my two cents. To give my two cents about Henny, uh man, he's he's solid, you know. Uh I agree with you guys. I think he's uh you know, like we said in New York, he probably jumping the gun a little bit by tr- calling out Lomachenko. Which is understandable because, you know, Lomachenko uh, might be because of the level of competition. It might be because of the weight that he's fighting at. But he's not looking as invincible as he was, as he was, um, you know, as once he looked. So I can see these guys seeing one or two ways where they can, you know, explore certain flaws, and they feel more confident to call him out. But it's one thing to see things from outside and you know see some. You no know, flaws or some weaknesses, but once you in there with Loma the God, it's it's another ball game. You know what I'm saying? But I think in the future, he will he could he could be Lomachenko, and if I was Lomachenko uh, or Lomachenko's team, I will take on him right now because he's I believe he's too green. He has he has the package though. David Haney has the whole package. You know, speed, power, reflexes. You know, he 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 looks like the the young Floyd. You know, like the when was Pretty Boy Floyd, not Money Mayweather. Pretty Boy Floyd. And if Lomachenko can do what what Mayweather did to Canelo, when he took on him, when he was too green, you know, you can put that on your record and, and it looked good. And you can say, you know, I beat this guy, which is a, 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 the future of boxing. But you know, like it's, it's sometimes about timing. We we seen that we, with the work with the you no know, the best of the champions. Mayweather did the best thing of timing his opponents. Uh, Sugar Ray Leonard did the same thing, and you know these are great 
boxers, but they timed their opponents and their opposition in a way where it was beneficial for them and for their legacy. Right, which which the reason why I wanted to touch on the Devin Haney topic tonight is let's dip into that a little bit because I'm not going to lie. I haven't done much homework on the kid. Where does he come from? What's his background? What do we know about Devin Haney? And I'm saying that because the issue is, is you're calling out Lomachenko, but we don't even know really who you are deep down inside. So what, let's touch on that if y'all have an opinion of Devin Haney. Because like I said, I think he's a solid prospect. I don't know much of the kid other than he keeps knocking out nobodies. Well, I know he's a solid business uh, business guy on top of being a, a, a talented boxer from the Las Vegas area. And um, he has had a lot of Mayweather Gym experience over the years. Um, before he decided to sign with the zone. Uh, but when I look at his record and when you start having a long record of people that you don't recognize uh, the opponent's names, um, not saying that they're all bad, but just saying that it's, it, it, it's starting to look like a suspect record. Like it's not that he don't have the goods. I don't believe that, but definitely the level of competition and name notability has to start being like a priority for his camp. And I know that he's a smart enough businessman to know that for himself. You know, Floyd didn't become Floyd by fighting people that no one knew their names. So, yeah, yeah so like, he's got to like, do better that. I like that you're touching on the business savvy of the kid, but what about boxing? Oh, well, well I said he's very talented. I mean, I said he's very talented. He does have a, a nice, uh, solid... Uh, well-rounded growing up in boxing type of um pedigree so um and he's fast i mean that's what i like about him is that he's fast and he does have power with it and uh, you know that's a that's a lethal combination for a lot of uh people in the lightweight division i mean that's what we're looking for we're looking for someone to be able to match tanks uh speed and power um, we want to test these opponents out against each other, but we're not getting anywhere by each, you know, each promotional <laughs> banner fighting within their own, you know, their own promotional companies. We're not going to see who's really the best that way. I think it's a little early to call out Lomo for obvious reasons. I can't find out one person on his resume that I recognize as far as you know, notable fights or notable uh, just just being known in the sport of boxing. So, I mean, he's got some work to do, but I'm sure he can do it. There's a lot of people out there that seriously could be avoiding him. I don't know if he hasn't, if they've not tried to make certain fights with him or if they're just still like kind of, you know, testing him out and, and having him, you know, really tailoring his come up slowly. Right. But that's kind of what I was trying to get at is exactly what you touched on. No notable opponents, no notable name. So let, let's take a step back, get you there first before you call out Lomachenko. Uh, mm -hmm. or even Tank or, or anybody else in the division. Let's get your name out there first. Okay. All right, but uh, you are going to have to excuse me right here. I'm going to have to play devil's advocate for like <laughs> one minute. <laughs> and, um, you know, we're talking about the kid, which, you know, he probably doesn't have a like a, like an amateur pedigree as Lomachenko does, but the kid definitely has the goods. You know, he, he, he has to be a, a, a a high prospect, you have to have a little more than the rest. You know, he has a little more speed, a little more power, a little more of everything. He's, he's well balanced all around, the fundamentals and everything. But to the point that you were making and to play uh, devil's advocate, yeah, he's been fighting a, a couple of persons that we're not really familiar with. Okay. But uh, you know what happened on Saturday. Nobody knew about this kid, uh, this the Fury fought. And man, he gave him a run for his money. You know what I'm saying? I'm not. I'm not coming later in the show. But... I'm not. Uh, <laughs> I'm not trying to make excuses for the kid, but I'm. I'm. I think that, you know, when you have a, a few professional rounds in the bag, 
that kind of counts for you. And, you know, his, his confidence is high. You know, he's running through these guys. And I can understand why he's calling Lomachenko. You know, he, he, they, he's building himself. He's promoting himself, which is a good thing as, as business-wise. But I think he's a little too green to get in there with Loma. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I respect him for, for calling him out, but I, I definitely agree. I don't think he's ready. Um, Jason said he's a solid dog. It's made with a prodigy. He needs Linares or Pedraza on his resume. He likes busting the guard, breaking your wrist, then he capitalizes on the wounded prey. Lopez versus Haney. Who wins? Tio for me, Lopez? Yeah, Tio. Good one. That's a good one. And uh, I will. Yes, yeah, that's a hard one. That's 55, man. To me, in my opinion. But. Uh, mm. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm gonna have to, you know, I'm gonna have to be a little biased, and I'm gonna go with my man from Brooklyn. Take over. I think, you know, maybe he didn't look that good on his last fight, but I think he has a little more power than, you know, than um, Haney. To me, that's a pure 50-50 fight. Yeah, it is. It is for sure. For me, it's not. I feel like Haney's skills are a lot more honed in right now than Tio's. And he's proven that in his last fight. Like we say, I don't know if it's distractions for Tio or not, but that last showing wasn't too hot, guys. So if we want to go putting in, you know, we got to, you got to, com- you basically got to compare it with skills too. Like you got to like be looking at what kind of skills plus power plus speed. So okay, I would have to lean towards Haney. I mean, the kid called out Loma though. Let's say the fight happens tomorrow. I assume you're all picking Lomachenko at this point. Yeah. Hands down. Oh, yeah. 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 Even Rob said hands down? <laughs> hands down. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good one. The, art, the sake of the argument, no notable names on the record. No experience. Who, where did he come from? Who has he fought? Who has he beaten? We can't really say. I agree. It would be a little bit too much too quick, but um, I, I definitely respect the fact that he called him out. I really hope that, uh, you know, the kid gets a chance maybe further down the line when he has a better chance of beating him. Um, let's say this. Who do you guys want to see him fight next? Any of the notable names like Tio. Tio would be nice. Farmer would be a really technical battle. That would be a, a technical chess match to me. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm always down to throw my boy, even though, you know, I'm always down to throw my boy Tank in the mix, even though I think that they're in um, their friends. So I don't think that would happen. But I would love to see them uh, fight him, fight Tank. I'll even throw in a surprise uh, uh, fight that I would like to see in there because I think at this weight, I think he can get down there. And I think this could be motivation for Adrian Broner if he can get down to that weight. He's, he said he wanted to get back down to that weight. He did. But I'm just saying, Adrian Broner. I'm just saying because a- AB needs to get do something with his life, okay? And maybe getting down at that weight class and, and taking some of these fights could do it. He and said he wanted to go to 140, him. not not 135. Man, well, you Robert, can get back I, to 135. As a boxer, we share your concern for one of the <laughs> boxers, no but you know, I think I think Broner uh, needs to earn that shot, you know, because he's been given a lot of opportunities back to back without without him winning, without him doing anything that you know that will give him that chance. So I think a shot at Henny will be something that you know. Some I will I would rather see him with a more uh, established name. I would love to see he's he calling out Lomachenko. I would love to see I would love to see him against somebody that Lomachenko fought. Linares would be a good fight. That would be a, a solid matchup. You know, I would like to see how he well, handled Linares. I think I think Henny could win, but um, I would like to see how he does it. You know, and 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 that will give us a better angle to see if he's ready for Lomachenko or not, you know? Yeah. I, I, I think I, I want to see him fight. I want to be able to compare him to Tio, though. I want to I want to see him against, like, the guy that Tio just fight, actually. Like, um, I think he was Chinese or Japanese. His last name yeah. is Nakatani. 
I, yeah. I want to see him like because that you know he need to take a baby step up but somebody that we've seen before fight one of the other you know great mm -hmm. cro uh, prospects before yeah. he go trying to jump to a you know Lenar Lenares and a um and like a presider or something like that. Like, I think you need to take like a little baby step up <laughs> first True. before you, you know, you really put them in there with that, you know, prior you know fighting category. Right. And you know what, who, who else I'll throw in the mix just because he's been mm -hmm. complaining a lot on social media. I'll throw him against Ryan, Ryan Garcia, you know, mm -hmm. just, just to see the two hot young prospects coming up. They, they're making a lot of noise. One because of his skills, one because of his skills and looks. So I, I would love to see that as well. You know what I'm saying? And I and agree with that. I don't want to see Leonardo's because people are forgetting what he looked like his last time out. Remember, he just recently lost. Um, just recently lost and looked bad. He looked like he's headed towards a retirement home right now. So oh, man. I understand Damn. what you're saying about Leonardo's being a valid name. But the way he's fighting right now, he's not fighting like that. I don't think there's any validity in that because I think he'll look like an old beat up fighter. Yeah, but what I meant was like I would love to see because we already saw Tio dealing with a tall fighter, like like a really a really height difference. Then we saw what Lomachenko did to Campbell again with a tall fighter with the height advantage. And you know, not to jump on subjects, but. I love the way Quadras deal with that kid that he fought on Saturday, uh, Cardenas. Man, he, he put a clinic on how, how to how to box a tall, longer fighter. So I would love to see a hot prospect give us his side of, you know, how to deal with a taller fighter that has the size advantage on you and, and the, the, the reach advantage and all of this. Yeah, uh, Jason just said, let's get Pedraza to drop back down then. Yeah, I, I think I think Pedro's yeah, I, I don't know. He 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 looked like he like he was just there for a sparring match. Yeah, he, he, did didn't, he look didn't look that good. And I think he could have taken the, the the fight. That's why, you know, I was kinda rooting for him, but it, it looked like he didn't want it at, at some point. You know, he, he was fighting, he was okay, but then uh, he kinda just took his like his foot off the pedal and I'm like, Okay, does he really want to win this fight or he just over there for, like for the paycheck? And I hate to say that about a world champion, you know what I'm saying? a, a former world champion. But I think he, he had his I think he's had his guy ready to go and then he just like you know took his foot off the pedal and I, I couldn't understand why. And then thank God that the other kid got his second win and you know he he he, he did just the little extra because any of them did, needed to do a little extra to get it and I think the kid realized he did the little extra and that's how he got the fight. Okay, Javi, um you can't on the roll right now, so we're just gonna keep going with the, the Devin Haney thing. We said he's gonna fight again here in November on that KSI card. <laughs> KSI uh, Logan Paul card. Why don't you go ahead and uh I know you wanted a little bit of time to talk about yes. that, so take this time. Yes. All right, yeah, yeah. I'll 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 be more quiet after I talk about this. So uh I'm not really familiar with these two guys, right? I'm I might refer to them as guys because I, as a man, I don't want to be respectful to others, even though I do consider them as two freaking clowns. You know what I'm saying? But what I, what I, what I think is, and what I wanted to talk about is, for anybody that's listening to this, anybody that loves the sport or has some type of appreciation for the sweet science like I do, it's just uh, disgusting, man. It's disgusting that you see a platform like, you know, that one, I'm not going to mention it. And then you see a, a, a real boxing promoter that has the reach and you know has the leverage to basically you know bring boxing to what should what it what it was and what it should be and now you have this fucking clown show I, I'm, I'm excuse me my french but the thing is i don't know i'm not really familiar with these two guys all i know is that i guess they have a lot of followers on youtube and you know they have a lot of audience but by doing this type of show right which is a freaking a, a clown event you're desensitizing the sport you 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 you're, you're having you driving something that's supposed to be about honor and glory and you're making it a clown show about oh you know let's let's see who who makes each other laughs more let's see who makes the more money and let you see these two idiots going at each other slapping each other because i'm sure they're not going to have no technique no form and nothing that's that's you know that requires you to put on some gloves okay and, <clears throat> Let, let, let me interject for a minute and just I'm, right. I'm kind of give you some feedback here. Okay, so 
Go ahead. I did see a, an interview with Eddie Hearn basically saying he's really hoping that he's gaining new fans of the sport. Um, and as you know, the the younger, fa I mean, the generation of American boxing fans is is very slow growing. Uh, yeah. You really need to get into this at an early stage. And, and honestly, I, immediately when I heard of this fight, even though I do think it's stupid, I'm right there with you. I thought, man, this is a good idea to get my stepdaughter involved. She knows these two. She don't really know boxers, but she knows these two. And maybe I can get her watching it early enough to catch, you know, a BJ Saunders, a Devin Haney, and, and maybe get her interested. All right. Let me ask you. Let me let me answer your objection, right? And which, if it's gonna bring fans to the sport, I believe that's okay. You know, it's okay, I guess. But the thing is, like, what type of people are you bringing to the sport? Because let's be honest, most people that are gonna tune in for the fight, they're probably just gonna watch that fight, and that's about it. They're not they're not they're not gonna follow the other boxers, the hardcore fighters that you know that we all know. And most likely after this show, either you're either they're gonna expect another clown show. Or whenever they don't have this type of shows, you know, they're, they're done with it. Like, like, like we've seen it with uh, what happened with this MMA versus boxing when Mayweather and 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 um, Conor McGregor. People tune in for that. It was a blockbuster, yeah. But then at the same time, after that, you, you didn't see much people bringing into the sport and the fans and stuff. And my my point is like, I'm the I'm the person that I give respect to anybody that lays up some gloves. Because, you know, anybody that goes in there deserves that. But these two idiots are shaming my sport, man. These two idiots are just... I don't know. I saw a little clip on, on YouTube. And the, the way the, the whole press conference was, that, that was embarrassing, man. That, that was just embarrassing to watch. Not to mention, you said that Eddie Hearn said that he's going to, you know, try to bring more people into the sport. I don't know if you've seen recently what's going on with Eddie Hearn. But I think a lot of his BS is catching up with him. You know what I'm saying? People are just... I put him on blast. They're taking the time to, um, you know, wait for the press conference to be in a public show and being able to kind of like, you know, um, expose him to what, for what he really is. So and me, I think that. Hold on, hold on, let me just finish. I'm almost done here. I think, I think that w what this show is, it just, it's just a confirmation and this proves any suspicion that Eddie Hearn is not here for the sport or to save the sport he's just here for the money and and this just proves it because there is going to be a lot of money thanks to this show that he's making this it's a clown show it's not a fight it's a clown show right. and if i wanted to see that i go to warstar.com and i see a clown show <laughs> right see. exactly ahead, and, and you didn't want to do it but let's let's put him out on blast it's eddie hearn it's d-a-z-n let me reiterate a comment but let me let me interject on that comment that i made a few weeks ago and I'm looking at everybody. Look, if y'all want a promoter, not all up in the video, not all up, not all up in, not all up in the press conference, not all up in YouTube trying to bring fighters to his show because he's failing at putting together a legit program with DAZN. Go, go to uh, Elderby. Go, go with PBT. Go with somebody like that, okay? <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I mean, I just yeah. only thing I have to say is I agree with Javi. I think it's like, I mean, I'm all for having that type of event, but put some more celebrities up there. Make it like a, you know, like a celebrity showdown type nonprofit situation, you know, or or, or like for charity or something, a percentage for charity or something. But yeah. don't put some real professional boxes on there because all you're doing is degrading those boxes and make it seem like they're a part of some type of fiasco type or or uh, less than honorable performance because that's you know boxing is a serious sport you can get killed in there it ain't the time to be on there with somebody who's doing it for fun and to to see how many views they can get and how many likes they can get how many followers they can get like it's not that type of situation but um on, and then on the other level of it with the Eddie Hearn situation, hey, I keep telling y'all, just like with that Saudi Arabia situation, I mean, having that fight in Saudi Arabia, and now look, you got drones being dropped over Saudi Arabia uh, this weekend. Like, is that somewhere you want to have a boxing match? 
You got you you really want to go there, Harvey? I the guy's you. in for the money. The guy's in for the money. It, it just proved it. <laughs> You know I what mean, I'm saying? Yeah, it, everybody treats this sport. He's not Eddie Hearn's not the first. I mean, look at Mayweather doing exhibition bouts. I mean, a lot of people use boxing as an ATM just to grab some fast cash and get out. Um, it's all a disgrace, and I hate it all. Uh, that's why I said I would, n I would not promote or do anything for a Mayweather Con fight. Really, I'm not going to do anything for Khan versus anybody right now. He, <laughs> he better not be getting no title shot anytime soon. Well, he's at least um, that's a real boxer. That's true. That's true. That uh, is true. But, right. But we're and on the Eddie I Hearn level. I've an exhibition fight before. I mean, that's nothing new for boxers to do that. They're saying, hey, we're not trying to get killed tonight. That's what they're saying. Right. Okay? Right. I'm not trying to, like, <laughs> actually get hurt tonight. That's what exhibi exhibition means. <laughs> But yeah. for you to like take some two, you know, fastenesas, uh, whatever you want to call them. Oh, they call them, um, what are they called? Influencers. Uh, for you to take some two influencers <laughs> and make them the main event, as in more important than real legitimate boxes that have worked and earned their spot on cards, legitimate cards is pretty bad like that's that's exactly that's, I mean, now think about th think, think about, about this for a moment right let's say you're a fighter like uh like maybe like ray beltran right and you've been a pro for 20 years and you've been fighting top guys top competition and you know like you you you, you give yourself basically your whole life to the sport and you're never seen that type of payday now he comes a, sh a, a clown right with some leverage because he they, they have followers and they are like like Shakur is an influencer and he comes and he gets like a million dollar um, paycheck for a fight and you fight your whole life and you never had that type of paycheck how do you think you're gonna feel about that you know what I'm saying and to to um, rephrase Triple G when he says this is no clown show boxing serious business you know what I'm saying so I think like I said I think it degrades the sport I, I don't like it I don't agree with it I get the part that is the people want to make money, but they want to put cash in, in, in their pockets. But there's ways to do it. And like Sakura said, if you want to make it an exhibition bout, then fine, make it happen. You can, you know, you can have them fighting with 12 ounces of uh, gloves, maybe headgear, maybe only three rounds, two minutes, amateur like, and and see that you know that you're not gonna come in here and act like a pro because you're not. You know what I'm saying? And pros for you to be a, a pro fighter, you, you have to go through a lot of stuff. And this cast, this this cast are not doing it. So it, I don't know if if I if I was to be a pro fighter, I will definitely feel a certain type of way. Well, people like to see a circus. I mean, people go to see a circus. Not um, true. One of the biggest circus fights, Mayweather versus McGregor. I mean, we already knew that fight was going to be a circus, and guess what? I mean, it's one of the what is it, the second best pay per view selling of all time. We all knew Conor McGregor didn't have a chance. He didn't even fight a pro fight, boxing wise, before that. And let's also be real about one thing. If his name was not Conor McGregor, there is no damn way that would have been allowed by Nevada State Athletic Commission. I'm 0 and 0. I can't just be getting a Floyd fight. Like that's that shouldn't happen. I don't care if he's a UFC fighter or MMA fighter. You can't just go in and fight the best of our generation. Number one is dangerous, but more than anything, it's just it's dumb to me. We all kind of knew it was gonna happen, but um. <laughs> We're talking about Eddie Hearn being a bad promoter, so let's go ahead and uh, loop this around because it will connect to Sakura's Tweet of the Week. Oh, yeah, guys. So I'm sure that you've heard about Ryan Garcia, you know, just putting it out there on Twitter for Oscar. Let me give her glasses so we can go to that. So here it is. It starts with, Oscar, if you don't believe in my talent, then you can release me elsewhere. Point oh. blank, period. If you do, then come talk. If you if you do, then come talk to me. Please, no more press and public bashing. Um, okay, and, Ryan. And uh, go ahead, go ahead. My side. Okay, then we got... I don't even want to speak about this stuff anymore, but Oscar called me for real and stop going to the press. We haven't talked at all. I want the best fights. I'm 21. I have to drive to be even better and I will continue to get better and fight the best fighters. Then later on, 20 hours later, 
<laughs> He's still hot mad, evidently, guys. I want everyone to know that I didn't just start fighting. I've been fighting since I was seven years old. I was 16. I was 15 national champ. I was a 15 national champ and made the U.S. team at 17. I wanted to go to the Olympics, but my family needed my help, and I decided to go pro. I went to Mexico to fight because I was too young to fight in the USA. I fought the best in the amateurs and the best and beat the best. The same names you hear now, I beat regardless of what people say of my ability. Keep going, keep going. And then I'm going to just end it with Coach Eddie Reynosa believes in me. He's seen in my in his own eyes. I'm getting better, and I want to show to the world. I'm capable of beating the champ. <laughs> okay. Well, you know what? I know everybody wants lot. to talk about Oscar and uh, – I know everybody wants to talk about Oscar, but I'm going to just break it down to y'all on this one simple level. Okay. Let's, let's, let's take this, let's take this step by step. What you are witnessing is a boxer that realizes that these people work for him. Okay. The promoter, the manager, uh, the, the trainers, they all work for him. It's not he works for them. He don't have to do everything that they tell him to do, right? Am I right or wrong? Right. It's about time. And it's about time because this has been the problem for quite a number of years. The boxers have forgotten that they are in charge of their career. If they see that they are not ready for a fight in a week, want someone to fight someone like uh, Duno in a week's time, uh, and, and you know you're not ready for that, and you train for somebody completely different. Why would you go ahead and risk your career and face a loss on your record when you know this ain't right for you? Like, that doesn't mean you're afraid or you dodging that fighter because you don't want to take that last-minute replacement. It just means, hey, somebody is looking out for me. When they tell me, I don't think this is the right move, dude. We need to wait. We haven't trained for this type of boxer before. Not only like, that, but but your promoter's supposed to be taking the brunt of that. They're supposed to say, "No, we're going to decline that. We are going to decline that." Not, "Oh, Ryan, like you know, this dude's like he's being thrown to the wolves. Where's where is Oscar? Where's Golden Boy saying, you know, no, we're not going to accept that fight? And you guys know, you know, we're not prepared. Something, yep. you know. And Lucas, you hit the nail right on the coffin. You got me thinking. How? Listen. Why would you take one of your star people whom you just had issues with the previous month because he wanted his damn coin, okay? He was trying to buy his mom and her house. So you just had problems with him the month before because he's like, uh, send me my change. And now you want to sit up here and be like, oh, go ahead and fight Duno. We know he's an awesome, you know, dangerous fighter, but you can handle him in a week. I mean, is this sabotage? This is something that he would never do to Canelo. And we all know this. Yeah. That's What's going a, on that's over accurate there? Right there? That's accurate for sure. And you know what? You're, you're right, man. Like, I think, you know, they, they're trying to feed this kid to the wolves. And, yeah, I can understand why he's trying to, you know, uh, get back on, you know, take his career on his own terms. But at the same time, if if – if you're saying that, you know, get off social media, call me, talk to me, then maybe you should lead by example and call as well, you know, try to reach him directly. That way, maybe you got more leverage and you put him on blast and you be like, look, you post a screenshot and be like, look, I called you, I texted you, no responded back. Now I have to use social media the same way that you're doing to try to get your attention. But, you know, they have this social media drama. And I don't think it looks good on n n none of the parties, you know, not by Oscar as a promoter, not by yeah. Ryan Garcia as a, as a fighter, but yeah, man, prop to the kid. Yeah, prop to the kid because he's not willing to just take pennies when he can, when he knows that, you know, I mean, nowadays when you have a, 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 a big social media following, you have some, some type of leverage. And, and, and let's be honest. And here's the you thing, it's really what's really sad about this. We were just talking about KSI and Logan and Paul, whatever that crap is, and how you know it's because they have so many fans on YouTube. Here Golden Boy is with honestly the perfect crossover. I mean, he's practically an Instagram model, you know. The dude's got <laughs> hundreds of followers, he's fast, he's actually a pretty talented kid. 
And they're fucking it up. They're fucking yeah. it up. Yeah, you're right. I mean, if I got to hunt my damn promoter down, he's not working properly for me. I need to be in communication yeah. with you. And if I can't yeah. be, I'm going to be trying to work my way out of that situation. I don't think this is coming yeah. out too good, like you're saying, Lucas. And, you know, we could see a situation where we have a, a, a Andre Ward type situation or a Mikey Garcia situation where somebody is sitting out when people want to see them fight and they're missing out on some of their great years trying to get out of a promotional dispute. So Which is I, that's, that's exactly what could happen. If, if, yeah. if Golden Boy was to try to fuck him over, they could do that. They could definitely do that. And then you have this kid with all this potential. And, you know, now people that want to see him fight can, can, can do it because he's under the contract. I mean, you guys saw that guy do, do no fight on that card this weekend. You know, and I know that's not no damn fighter for a, a, a warm up fight or just to stay busy. That That's not that. He is. <laughs> OK, not no week to prepare. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I completely agree. And and it's really sad because Golden Boy needs it. I mean, Golden Boy lately has been lacking in a lot of stars. Uh, it sounds like they were having issues with Canelo, too, there for a minute. So uh, yeah, they really need to do right, right by their fighters because it doesn't really seem like they have a lot left, to be honest. Uh, yeah. Rob, though, we, we, we kind of dug into this a little bit. Uh, let's give it over to Rob for Rob's rant. Oh, um, I was going to build that off of uh, off of our Tyson Fury topic. But since we're on the topic of Golden Boy and Canelo, why don't we just dive into this uh, Canelo Kovalev? Okay, we we'll talk about that first. We'll talk about that first. All right, everybody knows Canelo Kovalev is signed. I, for one, am fucking super pumped. I think this is an amazing fight. And uh, I'm going to say it right now, I'm going to pick Kovalev on this. I think... Canelo has bit off more than he can chew. Um, and all of you saying, like, oh, he's going to tear that body up. It's easier said than done, okay? Um, but, Rob, what's your take on it? I love this fight. And if y'all don't stop messing with Canelo and put this man pound for pound after this fight, I'm tired of y'all um, I'm tired of y'all denying him, okay? Let me just say that. Let he's got to win out. the fight first, Rob. He's got to win the okay. fight first. Absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. But for him to jump two weight classes up, this is why this is what stemmed from that. They took the titles away. They stripped him of the titles for no reason um, under him, under under anything that he did. Because they stripped the titles, they took away his opportunity to be undisputed. Because they took away that opportunity, he is now trying to go with the biggest fight. He came going up two weight classes. Now remember, there's not a um catch weight at all. This is for the 175 pound light heavyweight title. For him to go up two weight classes to try to capture this title is an amazing feat under his own. Can he do it? That would be the great question. But because I honestly think that both Kovalev and Canelo's boxing skills. Everybody knows they got power, but I think they they kind of negate their boxing skills. And they both have good, decent boxing skills. Kovalev has a great jab. He builds on that jab. Canelo has great body work. He builds on that. Canelo has a uh, solid movement for his size. So, you know, I think this is a more even matchup than you guys are giving credit to. You haven't even heard what we have. We feel about it yet. You're saying we're not giving him credit. Okay, well then Lucas credit. Well, I just, I actually just gave him credit. What do you mean? I said I was pumped for this fight. You know what? I, I he am. He said he's gonna lose already. He yeah, already I did. Yes, called. yes. I, I look. I'm one of Canelo's biggest critics. In fact, I've made a career out of it. Okay, um, for good reason. But not to go into that right now. Um, Look, Canelo's an, uh, honestly an amazing fighter, and I've been wanting him to step up for fights like this. When he first got the title, he was kind of holding on to it and, and fighting lesser competition. Um, but now he's stepping up to fight Kovalev. Okay, Now, we've talked about this before with Adrian Bronner and Mikey Garcia. Weight divisions are created for a reason. Now, maybe Co Canelo sees something that we don't, but... 
I still see a Kovalev that can still fight, maybe even still the top uh, light heavyweight in the division. Um, Y'all forget that he should have beat Ward that first fight. I mean, this is not just somebody that, oh, he's going to take a jab to the body and go down. No, I mean, you're going to have to work to get in there, one. And while you're in there, you best believe Kovalev's going to give you some punishment. Um, for all those that see Canelo just walking him down like that, Canelo is not this powerful puncher that y'all think he is. He never has been. He does not knock people out like that. And if you say yes and you say Amir Khan, I'm going to slap y'all through the fucking computer. <laughs> Like, ah! he knocks out people like Jose Cito Lopez and Amir Khan for a reason. You don't see him out here knocking out, you know, true super middleweights. You know, he's he's stopping guys that have belts that shouldn't. Let's call it what it is. Um, he is not going to stop. Yeah. He, is, he is definitely not stopping Kovalev with a body shot. So for y'all seeing that, I, I, I got a news for you. That's not happening. My money is on Kovalev. Javi, I see you nodding and smiling. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, I, I said it before. I um, I would have loved this bravado by Canelo. If it would have been, you know, like two years ago when Kovalev was at, the, at his peak. You know what I'm saying? I think, uh, just like many of us, he sees a lot of flaws, a lot of vulnerabilities on Kovalev. Uh, you know, we, we see the crusher already declining as a as a professional boxer not as a person because you you never know what the man is going through but at the same time man like i said even that day uh when he fought yard he, he looked like at some point he was a, he was ready to go just just and the way he reacted to those body punches it were not the best reactions i was you know i was expecting now i give him props because yeah it does take a lot of cojones for you to you know, go to the men's weight class and, you know, ask for the, the top dog at that weight division. But at the same time, like I said, it's, 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 he's not getting the full 100% crusher. He's getting probably a 75%, a 70% of what Kovalev was. And not to take nothing away from him, but the way that those body punches make Kovalev look, I know for a fact that his team was like, you see that? That's what you got to do. That's all you have to do. And Canelo, Canelo defense is pretty underrated, man. And yeah, of course, Kovalev has that tremendous piston-like job. But I'm sure Canelo going to, you know, uh, come in that job, slip it, and just punish the body. And I actually, I'm probably one of the few, and I'm going to say it here, I think he could stop Kovalev. You know what I'm saying? And Canelo, you know, he probably small as far as height, but as far as size, the man walks around at 170, 180. So it's like, you know, he, for this fight, he's probably the only fight that he's not going to have to go down in weight. He probably not going to have to worry about making weight. He's going to go on his natural weight that he walks around. So that that's going to give him more advantage that he don't have to drain himself like he used to. You remember when he made his own weight class at 155? So... I, like I said, I, I would like to see the fight. I give him props for doing what he's doing, but I cannot give him the full credit, especially when you have young Lions at your own weight division on the top of the game waiting for you. You know what I'm saying? To mention like Charlo, Andrade, uh, Murata. You have a few dudes at 160 that could give him serious problems. But once again, Canelo just... You know, doing what he likes, and now I know how, some way, somehow, he's gonna get a. What, what is this for the franchise title? Is this for the <laughs> entrepreneur title? What is this for? I mean, I'm sure there's a title in the, in the line. Some made up legacy title, but l let's let's be real, man. I, all right, you, you gotta slap yourself because I just said I slap you through that. I can't reach you, man. <laughs> you, you're, he's not stopping him. All right, cut it out. Look, Canelo right. is you not know what? stopping him. I have sat and I've listened to enough of this bullshit tonight. Oh, okay. shit. <laughs> Straight up bullshit. Let me tell you why. This is going to be the worst decision. Put my hand on it. The worst decision Canelo has made in his career. He is going to make the same mistake that Roy Jones made back in the day. He's going to go up two weight classes. Now, be it 
Roy Jones went up two weight classes to heavyweight, but it's still saying you you going up two weight classes to tackle somebody with power you haven't ever felt before. And he will not be fielding. Okay, he's gonna be trying to tag his ass too. And not only that, now you still gonna have all these people down. Okay, Canelo, who you gonna try to who you gonna try to fight then at that point? Uh, to 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 not fight middleweights. And Rob, I got you, I got you on one point you made. Okay, nobody took Canelo's belts away from him. Canelo took his own belts away from him by refusing to fight his mandatories, okay. On, on two belts, not one, but two world championships. And also, he does still have his franchise belt with WBC that nobody can take from him. But listen, besides all that, when he tries to drop down in weight, okay, and go back to middleweight, this is when you're going to start to see how that's not a good idea for people who want to maintain their career. This is when that weight is going to be like hell to get off. If you're not trying to do anything, <laughs> if but, you're not going to do anything, it's going to be hell to take off. And on top of that, you look like you're going to be looking like you ain't going to be looking as fast as you were when you was first at middleweight, when you could have took out the whole division and still grabbed all these damn belts. He is he is making a serious, serious flaw right now, guys. I mean, I'm you, not going to feel this fight at all. Right. But Sakura, look, um, uh, I don't think that he's going up in weight. This is the regular weight that he walks around. You know, I don't think he's, he's probably even going to make 175. He's probably going to make 173, he 174. He tries to drop down, no matter if he wins with Kovalev or he loses. When he yeah, tries to go back down to yeah. middleweight to catch I, all these people he's got lined right. up, it's going to be an issue. Right, Listen but Sakura, you got to... Right, but you got to remember, this is the same guy that drops down to 155 to super welterweight and then on fight night he blows up to light heavyweight so he's, he's that. Really so that, 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 that i'm familiar with the, with the weight to, but what you think he about to blow up to <laughs> at the weight that he's gonna go to look now I mean, if, we, if he wants I mean, to that weight the night this, of the fight this, he is going to be even heavier Javi, you know Javi, i'm hurts. sorry i'm with her look at man i mean you got tim bradley his walking around weight was like 180 i mean he's a short dude but he blew up you know it, right. Walk around right is not what you're going to be fighting at. It's completely different. Um, right. I and and for me, I think he bit off more than he can chew, man. You you shrink down for a reason. I think he beat right. a bit off more than he can chew. And I'm okay. going with Lucas. I do agree. Cove is going to get the victory on this. Okay. It's right. been hard to get these old veterans out this year, and there's been a lot of upsets. Okay. So for people to go in and just think that he's going to be able to just go up there and run through Canelo, I don't know about that. And here's but, the, here's okay. the thing. He's, he's not, style-wise, to me, I see a, a problem for Canelo. Um, I mean, you're looking at Sergey Koblen. He's six foot. Canelo Alvarez is five foot eight on a good day. Um, yeah. So you take that into effect on top of the power jab. I mean, Canelo's not, you know, he's not Dempsey. He's not doing the Dempsey roll in, you know, he's, he's not Mike Tyson. You know, he don't, he don't lunge in, you know, I, yeah, how, how's know. he going to get past the power jab? That's what I don't understand. You, what you he don't understand is he's already fought. Kovalev's already fought a pound for pound fighter in Andre Ward. Can he give Kovalev a new look and, and, and surpass what Ward possibly couldn't even do in that first fight? Mm, that's uh, a I got it. Listen, but, I got it. I think, wow. I think I'm going on this one, but when 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 that's when my prediction happens that Canelo uh, actually stopped Kovalev at the 10th round, all I want to say is I'm gonna come here and be like, I told y'all, I told y'all. I'll give you okay, I know, okay I'll but give I want you, you to prop. I want you to forgive but, me when he gets knocked out too. Okay, but Just here's like, the hey, I, I forgive you. You know, please forgive me. Here's the tell of it all, Javi. Here's the tell of it all, period. Danny Jacobs had a rehydration clause for a reason, and Canelo couldn't knock him out. That's the tail end of it. Danny Jacobs walks around at that weight at light heavy come fight night. Why'd you put the rehydration clause on it? A. B. Why couldn't you knock him out? 
So are because, you saying that you think Coco styles make matchups? No, I'm not saying. I don't. I think it's a 50-50 fight, but Canelo is not knocking him out. Okay. All right. I, I, well, I'm glad I'm blown on this one. That way I can look at all of y'all. Nobody is I, saying you wrong. We just giving our other our honest opinion. And my I, my fault in it is when he tries to drop back down. That's when I think it's going to be like a repeat of what happened to Roy Jones when he tried to drop back down and right. fight Antonio Tarver Sr. So right. this is what I'm trying to tell you that long term, it is not a good idea for him to do that without finishing out that division and the middleweights because all those middleweights are still going to be still like, Hey, you still ain't fought me. I'm still better than you. Cause right. he ain't fought none of them. They're going to still right. be hanging around. And it's so gonna have to try to drop back down and stay underweight long enough to make weight in order to get them. But Sakura, what, what guarantee is not the same. That he's going to go down to 160. What if he decides to go to 168 after this fight? Cause he's done it. He's done it. It's not like it's not like he's he's not obligated to fight all the guys at 160 before he moves up. He can do another kind of move, another golden boy if move. He and does be like, do that. Well, I'm done with 160. Now I'm at 168, and the, the competition 168 is pretty solid. But it's, I don't think that division is stacked as, as 160. So now all the guys at 160 just you know they, they yeah, basically just. I don't think huh? it's that type of money at at 168. Sure. But well, makes he, money anyway. He could do that. He could do that. However. Uh -huh. He gonna still, it's gonna fuck up his legacy if he does decide to do that. <laughs> yeah. uh, we already know what time it is with the legacy. When he fought, when he fought the likes of Rocky Fielding, we already know he he's he's not too concerned with his legacy. You not know, to mention, everybody says that until guess what? Until they've already stacked up plenty of paper, and then they start thinking more about what it is people are going to be saying to them towards the end of their career. That's when they start thinking about, damn, I left a whole division out there to be able to say they better than me and that I dodged them. Look, lately, I'm, well, I'm, I'm, and like I said, I've been Canelo's biggest critic, but he's fought Golovkin twice. He went up and fought Jacobs. He, he's going to fight Kovalev. As far as opposition goes now, he's he's got my full respect. Right. But, but Lucas... He, you said it right. He fought Triple G twice, but did he win though? No. I mean, he won on paper, right? He won on paper, but then what, what happened? We forgot that that he didn't really best Triple G. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe the second fight was more competitive, but he he flat out lost the the first fight. And, and here's and, here's my and point, the there, Hafi. You're arguing your own destruction because uh, honestly, <laughs> if you put right. a little bit of weight on Golovkin, I see uh -huh. Sergey Kovalev. Maybe right. you know a little bit different uh, style-wise, but but that's what mm -hmm. I see. Right, but let me let me give you this little this little information. Right, it's been rumors by by you know solid. This is solid information. Kovalev got dropped by a body punch from Golovkin years ago, years ago, on on Big Bear. So what do you think? <laughs> and Canelo sport this guy the same. Canelo <laughs> sport is part. Cover left too, so I, I'm sure. Uh, okay, this but is, this uh, I'm going to argue against not, your own point again. Who's got more power, Canelo or Golovkin? Golovkin. All right, of course. Then. look, I, uh, b a good friend up in Chicago, Derek Finley. He's fought many fighters, many fighters. Curtis Stevens, spares with Golovkin, um, a lot of fighters. Okay, he has a, a very veteran uh, record. Stand-up dude takes any fight that comes his way. He tells me nobody hits as hard as Golovkin. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm sure. I'm sure that. I mean, we already knew about that. About that you know what I'm saying? So, My so point you is, can't like, fault it all the way. Right. No, but I'm saying is, if if a middleweight like Golovkin could have done that to Kovalev, then Canelo can definitely do that as well. Not to mention, he has the stake power. Which Golovkin doesn't have, mm. and what you know what? But a steak <laughs> power. <laughs> I was confused. I was like, "What did you say?" Wait. I got it down. I got it down. I mean, you know what I'm saying? So you... that we're not touching on the we're not touching on the subject of, I mean, the fact that Kobe is not going to have much time to prepare for this fight either after just having a serious fight with a young um, yard A. So I almost didn't stop stopped as well. So got to add in the fact that, of course. Golden Boy wants them to fight, you know, 
early as possible. You know what I'm saying? Like they got to try to even get that type of advantage with an older fighter that everybody said is diminishing. Now, can you explain to me why that's necessary? They got to get every advantage, man. This It's the whole Mayweather tactic. You know, you get any advantage and every advantage you can against your opposition. Um, whether it seem little to you or not, you know, everything's negotiable. What you do got you ring need size, it? you got you glove it. size. That's what I'm saying. Restricted to the fact that he can't have a cup. I mean, it's it's going to get ridiculous. Lucas, they must feel they need it. I'm not disagreeing with that at all. <laughs> <laughs> He's going up two weight classes. Look, guys, when it comes down to the bottom line, when you go up two weight classes, please tell me a story that worked out well. Mm. Especially, Especially if you're going to, to fight a top guy. Adrian Bronner skipped a weight class, fought Pauli Malignaggi, barely won. And then you saw the destruction of what was Adrian Bronner. It's never a good idea to skip a whole weight division to go up. Now, I know he did technically fight. We ain't counting Rocky Fielding. That's that's <laughs> null. That's null and void. Yeah. Shakira's chagrin, <laughs> even though it didn't work out for him when he went back down in weight, but it did work out for Roy Jones. He did it win the heavyweight fight. It did. All right, guys. Man, uh, we're going go on to go on to Rob's man. rant. We no, could probably talk about Canelo natural. Kovalev all night because honestly i just i love that fight i'm very excited for it uh but rob go ahead with your your rant we'll lead that into uh the whole fury fight yeah absolutely because my rant is on uh about tyson fury in in this latest fight that he had um now to to everybody's surprise probably i'm going to jump on tyson fury's side here I'm sick of people saying that this man is is facing bums, not taking any risk out there, and and cannot beat Wilder in the rematch based upon the opposition that he has fought. When you look at this actual showing that he put together on Saturday, it was amazing to me for a few reasons. Number one, he could have took an easy out and tried to call a foul with the um, all the issues with the eye, okay? Because there was a serious foul missed in the bout where the guy tried to actually poke him in the poke at, at the the wound in the middle of the fight when the referee was trying to break. He could have did that. He could have just took a loss on the cut and let it keep bleeding out and not try to fight the man the way and, and try to use scare tactics and run away from him because you know, he had a built-in excuse. Obviously, the cut. He could have said I'd have knocked the bum out if he if he didn't cut me. He didn't do that either. Instead, what he did was he took the fight in the cut seriously and he fought his damn heart out. Period. End of discussion. He tried to knock the guy's head off on several occasions. He even risked doing it in the final round and got hurt because of it. So when you sit there and then what he do after the fight, he didn't even pick a date for the rematch for Wilder to say that that fight is next. So I'm coming after all the haters out there hating on Tyson Fury as if he's not one of the three best heavyweights out there. And I'll even go as to say there's really only two great heavyweights out there right now is Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder. This man put together a lot of heart, a lot of determination, and skill on Saturday night to a fighter who had absolutely nothing to lose. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm just but, astonished, Rob, that that, that you're actually yeah. on Fury's side. I didn't know what to say. I'm just still kind of taken aback. Now, I'm astonished on the fact that I, I agree with everything he said. <laughs> but, but you know what, Robert? Man, that that was a, a nice way to put it it was really really detailed and i just wanted to add the fact that tyson fury is bringing the heavyweight era back he has the charisma he has he the way he marketed himself he knew you saw what color he was dressing that day he knew who he was marketing that weekend 
So he understands the game besides just showing up and fight. And not to mention that the man, by fighting with that cut, which then opened up another little cut under it, and then it was foul that, like you said, he could have taken the easy, easy way out. The man answered a lot of questions for all the fans. The man can face adversity and deal with it. He can fight under pressure. And I can, I can, I can see a lot of questions that never been asked before already answered on Saturday night. And I haven't seen um, Wilder facing that type of adversity, so I, I wouldn't know how how can he, you know, how can he react to that. And well, we already saw Joshua how he reacted to adversity. You know what I'm saying? So I think we needed this type of heavyweight because let's be honest here, people like to see the big guys. That's what brings sometimes more of the casual fans and convert them into you know hardcore boxing fans. And the men. It, to me, I found it really humbling and nothing but respect when they pull him into the corner and the doctor asked him, hey, can you look from this? Can you look from this eye? Are you able to see? The guy said, yeah, man, let's go. Let's go. He didn't even want to be there for too long, not to give the, the doctor a chance to, you know, really, really inspect the cut. And what I wanted to add to the beautiful rant that Robert had, that, that cut man, Jorge Capetillo, that guy was the real MVP. He saved the night. He saved the fight. He saved the rematch. That guy earned his bucks. And you know what I'm saying? It was a tremendous fight. I thought it was going to be a boring fight. I was looking more for the undercard. But, man, top rank definitely knows a way to how to put cards together. And, I mean, we have give it to Scotty the sweet. White. Go ahead. Oh, Scotty White said, tomato cans, safari, uh, pinata, swartz, wildin', subpar opponents. I don't care. You get in the ring, you're dangerous. You're undefeated, yeah. you're dangerous. You uh -uh. can open up a cut. Now let me now let me answer this question just technically, period. If you open up a cut by a punch, in case you did not know this, and the fighter cannot continue, mm -hmm. it is a TKO victory. Period. That's right. That man could have won that fight based on that one cut, period. Hello. Yeah. And Titan Fury would have had to take a loss, but would have had an excuse, and he did not use it. Which explains yeah. why he wanted to continue to fight. But I'm going to have to put my two cents in on this situation because it don't matter about the opponents to me, but the quality of fights um, on that card was really good. Unfortunately yeah. for Tyson, he got a cut. And that cut is a substantial cut. It is not just going to go away. And mm -hmm. if I were Wilder looking at that fight, which I'm sure he is or did, I would know and I would target that particular eye where that cut happened. Because you okay. and I know that that shit is going to open right back up if he gets hit with a good solid shot again. Because that's how deep it was. Yeah. Um, I think this is not good for Tyson as far as another thing that Wilder may try to exploit in a rematch. And also, it puts in jeopardy the fight timeline because they want February. However, I'm not sure if they have to double stitch that and do plastic surgery that that's <laughs> going to happen in February because those things take at, like you need at least six months for it to heal up where it won't just open up from a small punch yeah so i see this as going to come back and bite him and it's all because you're taking matches that you shouldn't be taking but not only that i'm gonna go a step further and say you're a heavyweight champion you're the lineal champion you are the best skill in the heavyweight division no question about it but your reflexes at the end of the fight is starting to be a concern to me anyway because it's like you got you know your reflexes start to slow down um his stamina was supposed to be better than what it was supposed to be in his last couple of fights because of the continued weight loss and stuff that we've been seeing but stamina seems to be still something that um he's having an issue with so he's got to get that situation under control because that's another thing that could be exploited i mean so, while the call everybody knows when wilder started catching him 
I think it was the seven and the 12 rounds of his fight. So he's, he's starting to have an issue later in the, later in the fight. Um, as far as stamina, because usually he has enough jerk and enough reflex to where he would have missed that shot. So I'm concerned about that for him. Not saying he can't correct it because he is the best skilled, but I'm saying that it's 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 some things that Wilder can pick up on and he can try to exploit. So after a beautiful, beautiful rant and a beautiful display of heart, courage, and determination on Saturday. Yeah. I expected some of the haters, meaning some of the viewers out there listening, to be dumbfounded and jump to conclusions and jump on the hater aid, so to speak. I did not expect that from you, Shakira. Oh, you're saying I'm hating. I'm giving him constructive yeah, criticism. Absolutely. I no, mean, honestly, I gave him pointers. I gave him things that he need to work on, okay? You can call it <laughs> hater or whatever you want to call it. I'm trying to help him. If that's I'm telling you how it would be, yeah. if I was wilder, this is what I would see. This is what I would target, period. Take it how you right. want to. Now, he can but, say it's hating if he want to, or he can use it to try to improve the situation before he get in that ring with wilder again. <laughs> Look. Right, but you know what? I think I'm gonna add just little, little thing because let's be honest. <laughs> Wilder, Wilder is not is not like he's he's a um, you know the the beautiful thing about him, uh, and and Wilder, is that they don't look invincible. They 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 look pretty much beatable. You know, like somebody solid could beat them. So I think that's what makes the division even more interesting because they these guys are undefeated, but they look like they they could be beat. You know what I'm saying? And and yeah. they yeah, they right. both showed us. They, they got weaknesses when they fought each other in the first fight. Now, I think Wilder is going to edge it, but to your point that you were making about the cut, I'm sure his team is going to advise him to delay the, the, you know, postpone the fight a little longer because he's going to need more time to heal depending on the surgery or how deep the cut was. And yeah, I'm sure Wilder is going to try to take advantage of that. But at the same time, yeah. what guarantees us that, you know what I'm saying, that Wilder is going to come out a victor from the Ortiz rematch. We don't know what, what could happen. Nobody gave this guy all the walling a chance. And look, he almost got a TKO thanks to a cut. What if the same fate happens to um, Ortiz and he could actually, you know, get a, a win out of a, a cut or some something that could happen? We never know. So you the think beautiful thing about- You think fans are gonna see a, wanna see a, 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 a Ortiz Fury fight? I wouldn't yeah. mind watching it. I mean, Even though I know. <laughs> look, 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 let's let's call I it mean, what it is. Over all, a wilder fight. All, all of the heavyweights oh, that you guys are considering great right now have already been been tested. Okay. Joshua mm -hmm. failed the test. Mm -hmm. Wilder was hurt bad against the Ortiz. Got a little bit of extra time to recover. Was allowed yeah. to go back out and he was able to recover and and, and pull out the victory. Uh Fury found himself in a similar situation. Uh, just like Joshua did, where you know he expected a, a an easier fight, all of a sudden his his back's to the wall, and and Fury prevailed. Um, now I agree with you. I think that the cut could cause some issues going forward, but nobody has this kind of charisma. He's he's definitely helping out the heavyweight division, yeah. um, and, and boxing is better for Tyson Fury. Um, yeah. Should he have struggled with the Swede? I don't know. I mean, we don't really have a good benchmark. Maybe the Swede goes on to still win fights. Uh, yeah, that's what I was going to touch on is that I would like to see Wallen again, to be honest with you, fighting and testing some of these other welterweight, I mean, heavyweights. I mean, that short left hand is what opened it. I mean, and that, it was just a good, solid, accurate punch. It was not a headbutt. It was nothing dirty. It was just a good, solid punch. Um you know, he, he had a chin. He had a hell of a chin. Yeah, and he was taking some shots. I mean, l let's give it to him. Just because, you know, we haven't heard of him and, and because he hasn't had that opportunity yet to, to have a big fight does not mean he's a shitty fighter or a tomato can, as previously stated by um, one of our comments on Facebook. <laughs> but Right. But you got to give it to him. Um, and honestly, all the heavyweights right now, could lose just as as Javi was saying. I mean, Ortiz is not you know an, an easy win, even though he may be seventy two. I don't know how old he is. Uh, <laughs> but but other than that, I mean, 
we got Joshua Ortiz or uh, Joshua Ruiz. I'm looking forward to that fight probably more than even, well, close to Canelo Kovalev. I mean, mm. it's up there. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, it's going to be in Saudi Arabia, which uh, do I have to watch it early or something? I'm sure that time is going to be all weird, ain't it? Yeah. Yeah. Most likely. And that kind of ruins it for a lot of uh, American uh, viewers. I think we all kind of want our big fights to be late on TV. But um, is there you know, a, a, that's the point? You is, know, that was the point. Is there even a date and uh, yet for Ortiz Wilder too? No, not yet. I, I'm skeptical that that fight gets made. There isn't um, even an agreement. Yeah, there isn't yeah. even some agreement. Yet. I'm very skeptical that that fight even gets made, one of which Wilder's not dumb. Wilder's also a good businessman. He sees, like, oh, shit, Fury about got knocked out. Oh, shit, Joshua got knocked out. I'm not, I'm not risking it. You know what I'm saying? I'm just going to go for the big money fight. So I can even expect maybe Fury happening before an Ortiz fight. I was, yeah. No, nothing signed no. yet. I can see Ortiz getting pushed aside. I can really see that. Um, and maybe even... If, if for some reason the Fury fight does not come to fruition, even holding out for a uh, Joshua Ruiz winner. Yeah, I could see that. That that last one that you just said, Lucas, that seems more likely because those belts are in play. And right. he is seriously targeted and focused on being a unified heavyweight world champion. So for him, he might need to recalculate everything as far as his schedule bouts that he came up with, because if the truth, I mean, if they learn anything from this AJ Wilder fiasco, it is, <laughs> it's like, why are you waiting around for a fight that's solid and makes that type of money? Stop putting that shit off. Like when you got that opportunity, go for it. Like, don't just sit around and like piss it away. And then you have an upset. And you know this is the year of upsets. <laughs> right, but Sakura, to, to play devil's advocate, right? Mm. I think I think <laughs> I think <laughs> you knew he was gonna do that, right, Lucas? Yeah. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> I think Wilder versus Joshua can still make a lot of money, regardless of you know Joshua's uh, un uh undefeated record being blemish already. I think uh people will still want to see the fight, maybe not as bad as before when they were both undefeated, but I think I mean I'm I still want to watch it. I'm sure all three of you want to watch it, and oh, no, anybody I, no, else. I fully no. agree with you. I mean, you take Mayweather Pacquiao's prime example. I mean, Pacquiao was coming off getting knocked out by Marquez. It didn't matter. I mean, yes, it, I think it. The viewership went down. I think it could have been way actually bigger than what it was. You know, if, if Pacquiao knocks Marquez out, then there's an even higher demand. However. We were talking about earlier, I mean, it's all about fan bases. Joshua has a freaking enormous fan base. Wilder's yeah. starting to build that kind of a fan base, too. Uh, maybe not quite as big as Joshua's, but America, we don't back shit. You know, just saying. <laughs> um, it's, it's just how it is. But I, I agree with you. I think no matter what, still a big fight, still big money fight. I don't see it. I think AJ is too exposed right now. He's going to have to do several fights before he'll garner the type of interest. I mean, he got it right now where even his fans are going to have a hard time seeing his fight with Ruiz. This, uh, I, he's losing fans by the moment, by the minute. Like, I'll not, tell you not, what, not though. Not them. I tell, I, I tell you the perfect card, and I would pay $100 for this all day, okay? Mm -hmm. You have Joshua Wilder main event, co-feature, <laughs> Fury Ruiz. I'm there. Oh yeah. man, I saw the car though. Yeah. I'm gonna, gonna lie, but you know what? I think I think um, the UK fans they're pretty much loyal, regardless of whether fighters lose or win. For the most part, not not in general, I but con. So um, yeah, yeah, exactly. So <laughs> what happens is <laughs> us, 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 us over here. Situation. Go. <laughs> yeah, but over here, look, can can fight. Can, Can was ready to do an exhibition fight, and I'm sure he, he had his fan base already ready to watch him. The thing with, with all of, uh, right here in America, we got so used to the undefeated records, the you know the the pattern records. So now when we see somebody that has one or two else, oh, uh, he's no longer relevant for us. Even though he fought 
a, a top guy or he lost to the best to the better man. We 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 got used to that little Mayweather effect. So I think that having beat over there in the UK, so I think that's why they you know they keep the their fan base a little longer because they're willing to forgive to forgive their champions if, if they lose one or twice. You know what I'm saying? Now now to play devil's advocate, oh right? God. Oh, I think, <laughs> Where's I my think drink? That, I'm finna start drinking every time you say devil's advocate. <laughs> no, nah, but I think that Joshua Joshua Stock is gonna take a big hit if he loses the rematch with Ruiz. That's for sure. That's oh, for yeah. sure. All right. Um, I, I know you viewers at home there want more. If you do, check us out, heavybagboxing.com. Oh, check hold us out. Again before we Tuesday. before God damn it, Rob. Before we log out. <laughs> yeah, be, before we log off, I just gotta give a, a shout out to Javi over there. Who's broadcasting live from the mall parking lot? He just got off of a twelve-hour shift to join us here tonight. Shout out to my boy. Damn right. You damn right. They're closing up already. They're closing up already. Oh, <laughs> yeah, right. oh man! You, you're always right. doing this to me at the end. No doubt. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, thank you all for coming on, uh, Javi, Sakura, and Rob. I'm Lucas. Thank you again. We'll see you again on next week. Tough Talk Tuesday.